Alam mo ba ang probability distribution ng isang discrete random variable at ang mga properties nito? Marunong ka ba mag-compute ng probabilities ng isang given random variable? Marunong ka bang gumawa ng probability mass function ng isang discrete random variable at ang kaakibat nitong histogram? Good morning everyone, this is Teacher Jorel and welcome to our online class. From our previous experiment of tossing three coins at the same time, we listed the following possible outcomes. And afterwards, we counted the number of heads that appear in each outcome and assigned a number that corresponds to each. And they are as follows. The first has three heads. The second has two heads. The third has two heads. The fourth has two. The fifth has one. The sixth has one. The seventh has one. And the last outcome has zero head. This column, the number of head, is our random variable h. And these are its possible values. If we are going to write it in a set notation format, this is how it looks. h equals, what are the possible values? 0, 1, 2, and 3. And now, we added two more columns to our table. On the third column, we are going to put our random variable h and its possible values. Here, we're going to put h. And the possible values are 0, 1, 2, and 3. On the fourth column, we are going to compute the probability of the possible values. We are going to label the fourth column the probability of H. Or P of H. Now, before we compute for the probability of each possible values, we have to determine how many possible outcomes are there in the beginning. And we can see that in the first column. Here, you will see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are 8 possible outcomes in this experiment. And we are going to use that as the denominator of our probability. Let us begin. Let's start with zero. How many zeros are there on the second column? There is only one. Therefore, the probability of zero is one over the denominator eight, which is the total number of possible outcomes. Next, one. How many ones are there on the second column? One, two, three. Therefore, there are three over eight possible outcomes. Next, two. How many twos are there on the second table? One, two, three. There are three over the total possible outcomes, eight. And last, Three, how many threes are there on the second column? There is one. One over eight. The probability of zero is one over eight. The probability of one is three over eight. The probability of two is three over eight. And the probability of three is one over eight. This is the table for probability distribution. By definition, a probability distribution is a table showing all possible values of a random variable with its corresponding probabilities. On this table, you will see the random variable h and its possible values 0, 1, 2, and 3. On the second column, you will see the probability of H and its corresponding probabilities, 1 8 3 8 3 8 1 8 
This table is a probability distribution table. A probability distribution has two properties. The first property is the individual probability P of X should be greater than or equal to zero but less than or equal to one. Let us check our probabilities. The first is one eighth, the second is three eighths, the third is three eighths, and the fourth is one eighth. All probabilities are within this range. Number two, the summation of all probabilities should be equal to 1. Let us check. 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 3, 7. 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. 8 over 8 or 1. The summation of these four individual probabilities is equal to 1. Let us conduct another experiment. Boxes A and B contain balls with numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. We are going to write a probability distribution of the sum when one number from each box is taken at a time with replacement. It means we are going to return the balls to its respective boxes every after we take the sum. Let us begin by determining the possible outcomes of this experiment. In this table, I have here the boxes A and B and the balls 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I pick ball number 1 from box A and ball number 1 from box B, the sum is 2. If I pick ball number 2 on box A, and ball number 1 from box B, the sum is 3. 3 plus 1, 4. 4 plus 1, 5. Next, 1 plus 2, 3. 2 plus 2, 4. 3 plus 2, 5. 4 plus 2, 6. 1 plus 3, 4, 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 3, 6, 4 plus 3, 7, 1 plus 4, 5, 2 plus 4, 6, 3 plus 4, 7, and 4 plus 4, 8. These are all the possible outcome of this experiment. If the sum of the two balls coming from boxes A and B is our random variable, what are its possible values? If we're going to look at the table, the possible values are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If we are going to write our random variable S in set notation format, this is how it looks like. Random variable S equals, what are the possible values? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, let us construct the probability distribution table of this experiment. Here, I have a table with two columns. On the first column, we are going to write our random variable S and its possible values. We are going to label it as S, and the possible values are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. On the second column, we are going to write the probability of S or P of S. Now we are going to compute the individual probabilities of these possible values. But first, we have to determine the total number of possible outcome in this experiment. 
In this table, we can determine the total number of possible outcomes. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 4, there are 16 possible outcomes all in all. 16 is going to be the denominator of our individual probabilities. Let us begin. 2. How many 2's are there in this table? There is only 1. Therefore, the probability is 1 over the total number of outcomes, 16. Next, 3. How many 3's are there? 1 and 2. You can write 2 over 16. Number 4. 1, 2, 3. There are 3 over 16. 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 4 over 16. 6. 1, 2, 3. 3 over 16. 7. 1, 2. 2 over 16. And the last is 8. There is 1. 1 over 16. These are the individual probabilities of our possible outcomes. If you want to reduce the following into their simplest form, that is okay. Now, before we end the table, we have to check if it follows the two properties for probability distribution. Number one, or the first property, each individual probability should be greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to one. Let us check. One over 16, two over 16, three over 16, four over 16, three over 16, 2 over 16, and 1 over 16. All individual probabilities are within that range. Number 2. The summation of the individual probabilities should be equal to 1. Let us add. 1 plus 2, 3. Plus 3, 6. 6 plus 4, 10. 10 plus 3, 13. 13 plus 2, 15. 15 plus 1, 16. 16 over 16 or 1. And this is the probability distribution of this experiment. Using the data from our probability distribution, we can plot those points on our Cartesian plane to create its histogram. On the x-axis, we are going to plot the possible values of our random variable s, and on the y-axis are its corresponding probabilities. Let us plot. For number 2, the probability is 1 over 16. So we can draw a bar here. Then we can just shade. Next, number 3 or 3 is 2 over 16. Then we can shade. For 4, it's 3 over 16. Five, four over sixteen. Six, three over sixteen. Seven, two over sixteen. And last, eight, 
1 over 16. And this is the histogram of this probability distribution. What if an experiment has too many possible outcomes? Our previous experiment, the two boxes A and B, has 16 possible outcomes. It is still possible for us to write all those 16 outcomes. But what if there are 50, 100? Is it still practical for us to list all those possible outcomes? This is where the probability mass function comes in. Another way of thinking about probability distribution is to consider it as a function. Here, we denote p of x as a function of x or f of x. In this case, we will have a function with ordered pair x, comma, f of x. Now, our discrete probability distribution becomes a probability mass function. Let us take our first experiment, the tossing of three coins. The coin has two faces, the head and the tail, and we have three coins. To determine the possible outcome of that experiment, we can use this formula, where n is the number of coins. 2 raised to the third power equals 8. Therefore, we have 8 possible outcomes in that experiment. 8 becomes the denominator of our probabilities. Next, x represents the number of head in each outcome. How many ways does a head will come out in each outcome? With that being said, we can use the combination formula n c sub x, where n is the number of coins and x is the number of heads. We are just going to substitute this given to our formula. For the first, we have 3, C, sub, 0. Using your calculator, the result is 1. Next, 3, C, sub, 1. Using your calculator, the result is 3. Next, 3, C, sub, 2. The result is? Three also. And last, 3 C sub 3. The result is 1. If you are going to observe, the result in this column are the same with the numerator and this column. 1, 3, 3, and 1. Therefore, the numerator of our function is 3c sub x. f of x is equal to 3c sub x equals 8 is the probability mass function of our probability distribution where x is equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3.